So the question is, do you need a really expensive time trial bike to be fast? I'll give you that answer very shortly now. So I'm going to quickly tell you what you need and what you don't need in the time trial world. A lot of it is gimmicks, uh, in my opinion. Um, I feel like I've almost proved it in the past that you don't really need a super expensive bike. Because uh, some of these bikes, as everyone knows, can be 10 or 12,000 pounds, if not more. Um, so I'll tell you how I started off. I paid uh, 15 or 1,800 pounds uh, for the bike. Um, and it was fairly basic. It had the Acrison wheels off that bike. Um, SRAM Rival, it didn't have the carbon uh, handlebars at the front. It's just some basic ones, like aluminium or whatever. Um, so I'll just quickly tell you what you need. You don't have to buy a really expensive bike. You could just buy a cheaper alternative Chinese bike from like Alibaba, Yolio. Um, you, you really don't need to, as long as it's lightweight, carbon, stiff, um, you're halfway there. It's mainly all about the gearing at the back and what suits you. In this circumstance, a 5034. Um, that's an old chain ring. Uh, I've been swapping them around, but that's a 52. I don't generally race on a 52. I find the gears are too big for me. Uh, I'm a spinner, you know, like 90 cadence plus at least. Um, that's my style, you know. Yeah. Um, in my in my peak uh, fitness and race form, I'm down to like 60 kilos. Uh, sometimes even about 58. I'm about five foot eight. So I think that's like a BMI of 18 point something. So almost like Tour de France level in terms of power to weight ratio kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I was uh, I was extremely determined when I was a bit younger in the time trial scene. But anyway, back to this. Uh, I've just got my one set of wheels on here. I think that 88 millimeter depth, uh, basically never use that wheel on the back. If I'm time trialing, I mostly only ever use the, the carbon disc wheel. That also came from Yolio. Um, I think I paid 350 pounds for it. Uh, but that is obviously quite some time ago. Um, a lot of these things uh, just don't make too much difference. It's all about what you're spinning out, you know, what's per kilo um, and how much dedication and true grit you have um, but yeah obviously everyone likes a nice bike but a lot of people can't afford them so yeah you just don't have to start off mega expensive uh, you'll be seeing some videos of me racing on my time trial bike and, and I'm quite happy to upload those or get my GoPro out it should be quite fun to watch uh, just do a lot of local races might do some nationals uh, maybe next year or something. We'll see how it goes. I'll just enjoy cycling. Yep. The other important tip is to get a bike fit, or get someone who knows about how to set you up on a on a time trial bike. Uh, if you're just beginning, um, maybe maybe watch the pros in like the Tour de France. Look at pictures and how they sit on the bike uh, I would say this is probably a little bit old school now you often see the handlebars raised up to about there um, so they're sort of less hunchback and they have their back more flat that seems to be more the approach now um, I'll see how I get on with it I might actually buy another set of bars just to try it out always like finding new ways of Gaining those uh, extra gains. Um, the other nice little detail on this bike, thinking about it, just looking at it now, is the brakes. They're all nicely tucked away. And that was quite advanced at the time. I think it was one of the first bikes that done that um, in 2013 or 2014, whenever I got the bike. 
Um, other top tip, make sure you get decent pedals. Now, if you're an out and out racer, I would say speed player are the ones. You can get like a Chinese knockoff version, which I hear are pretty good. And I will do a video about those when I buy mine and get them after I've done a few miles on them. From what I heard on YouTube already, from people I watch, they are very good. They are the real deal. They don't last quite as long, but they're still pretty good and lightweight. You just lose too much power otherwise if you use normal pedals. Um, but if you're like a beginner cyclist and time trial is not your thing and you just want to go around on a road bike or a mountain bike or something, something casual, then get MTB shoes. Easy to walk around on, generally cheaper in terms of the pedal setup and the shoe. So that's another big tip. Right, hopefully that clears up a lot of things about bikes um, and sort of where to start. Uh, but probably what to do and what not to do. I think I probably at the start got caught up with the big brand name on the on the you know the wheels and the frame and everything else. If I had my time again, I probably just would buy a cheaper Chinese frame and just customize it. So. I hope that clears up a lot of things. Um, thanks for watching. Welcome to Cycling Games. There'll be a lot more videos to come. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching.